so that we can have church, so that we can be in here this morning. We don't think about that a lot. We just we just come to church. We come in, we worship the Lord. We go away and we do whatever. But it's because of people that gave their life that we can do this today. Other countries can't do this. Right. And for the men and women, all different races, that gave their life, I say thank you. And I know that a lot of our families have been touched by that. And, but you know what? Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He died so that we could be free and live eternal, have eternal life with Him. Those that have given their life for this country, we will honor the Lord Jesus. We're giving this life for all of us. Pray. Father, I love you and I give you praise this morning. I thank you so much for Jesus dying on a cross and shedding his blood so that we can have eternal life. I thank you for divine appointments. I thank you for everything that you've set up. I thank you for those that, that died for our country. That uh, Lord, we would not let them die in vain. That we remember them and honor them for the sacrifice that they made. Some died, Lord, and they had children, they had wives, all had mom and dads, grandmothers, grandfathers, and they grieved. And today is a, is a hard day for them, and I pray for peace that passes all understanding to be upon them. Those in this room, Lord, that lost loved ones, I pray in Jesus' name that you would minister to them, touch them today. God, for those that we've mentioned on a prayer uh, list, uh, Lord, some of these are very desperate. You said, by your stripes we were healed. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would heal of uh, these folks that we talked about. Lord, as we take up this offering, we love to build the kingdom of God, not just New Vision Ministries. Help us build the kingdom of God. That's what I loved about last night. There's so many different churches represented, so, so many different ministries represented, and we're about building the kingdom. We're not about just building a church or this church. We just love you today, Lord. I pray for the praise team that you anoint them afresh. Lord, that lead us right into your lap, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, if there's anyone in here today, Lord, that's lost, anyone in here today that's backslid, anyone that's lukewarm or cold, God, I pray that you minister to them and draw them to you today. You've come to heal the brokenhearted, to set those that are captive liberty, to give them liberty, Lord. To open blinded eyes, Lord, spiritually, physically, whatever. Lord Jesus, we love you. We ask you to move by your spirit this morning. Thank you for everything that you've been doing. Uh, Lord, you've been moving in this place. But Lord, we don't settle for that. We want a fresh anointing, a fresh move today. We give you praise for everything. May everything that's said and done this morning be done to glorify your son, Jesus. We give you praise for it. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That's on my heart to feel and my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. His mercy reigns unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. My hope 
secures He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone and I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed Shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be. Forever, mind. Everyone, lift up your voice. My chains are gone, and I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Amazing grace, my chains are gone, and I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Amazing
fall On the name of Jesus I will call For I know my God is in control And His presence is unshakable
that you always love us even when we're at our worst. When we feel unlovable, God, you love us. And when we go through uncertainty, God, we know we can trust in you. We know, God, that you are right there. You go before us and you're our rear guard.
believe you. I don't believe you. We're singing a song and saying, I still believe you. That nothing's the same change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we sing in that song, and you don't believe it. Oh, you say the words, but you don't believe it. You see, when Jesus came on the scene, crowds flocked to him because he was the answer to every need that they had. He opened wide eyes physically and spiritually. He set captive free. Week after week we come and say, I'm free. And I wonder. That word's so easy to say. So easy to say, I love you. But do you really love him? Do you really believe that he's still the healer? He's still the deliverer. He still sets captives free. He's here and his presence is here. When he walked the face of the earth, crowds ran to him. And I don't see any of us running to him today. But he's the same. I don't care what you believe. I know what I believe. His word says, by his stripes I'm healed. The fact is, I got some things going on in my physical body, but that does not change my belief. I am healed, I am restored, I am made whole through the blood of Jesus. The blood still works and it's working this morning. If you have a need, you need to come to Jesus because I still believe believe for you even if you don't believe God's here He wants to move among us this morning any need Jesus is sufficient for every need
from the ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrected.
breathe the spirit of the living God inside of us. And now, man, we, we're victor. We're victorious. We, we're the victors and not the victim. And now we, we're supposed to share his victory. That's by sharing the word of God and witnessing and being a soul winner. Praise you, Lord. Praise you for the presence of the mighty God that's in this place. I give you praise this morning, Lord. We worship you in spirit and in truth. You are the reason we're here. You said if we lift you up, Jesus. And we've done it in every song. You said if we lift you up, that you draw all men into you. That's lost men, cold men, saved men, fired up men, women. You bring us all to you, Lord. Draw us closer to you. I give you praise this morning for your anointing. Because your anointing destroys the yoke. It don't break the yoke like people talk about it. It destroys the yoke. So it don't come back. It can't be repaired. The devil can't repair it. I pray that you would uh, unleash an anointing in this place. It would destroy every yoke in people's lives and in their bodies and in their mind and in their circumstances. And the devil can't ever come back in that particular area, Lord. I give you praise, Lord, Lord. You're awesome in this place. You're awesome in this place. And we worship you. All glory goes to you. We won't touch your glory. We give you praise, Lord. I ask you that you continue to move by your spirit. God, you use Jessica. And Lord, you use my words, Lord, that it will penetrate the hearts of our people. God, that they just won't just hear it and think that's good. But they'll hear it and they'll let it go to their heart and then they'll apply it to their life. It's no good if we hear great things and we don't apply it to our life. I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise for setting this up for such a time as this. For such a time as this, Lord. To speak to your people. A clear word. A true word. God, move by your spirit. Continue to move. Help us to obey your word. Whether we like it or not. Submit to your word and your will. Whether we like it or not, Lord. Because you know what's best for us. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our children are going out now. Wow. I just I want to introduce our special guest. You guys know how I am. You remember when I brought Jamie Torres in here? I met Jamie the day before. <laughs> Talked to him on the phone. Last night as we was uh, in for the unashamed of worship, uh, the youth worship conference last night, Jessica got up and she gave a spoken word. And uh, it is powerful. I mean, it's powerful. And uh, she's a very humble, uh, very humble young lady. I told her she could have the mic stand. She could have a mic. She said, I'd rather have the mic stand. I said, you walk around because I walk around. She just looked at me. <laughs> so I want you guys to, to smile over here. Jessica, would you come? Praise the Lord. Let's give her a hand. homosexuality and sexual sins with, with men and I remember I was coming to church and I was broken and, and God was saying that just let it go and in the midst of that I remember at night God was saying that let her go if not then I was going to die in that sin I, I truly didn't understand what he meant by truly letting it go I was trying to fill voids with, with men with women, with drugs with alcohol, with smoking, but it was never enough. I tried to fill a God-sized void with things that was never enough. God delivered and set me free. Amen? He delivered and set me free. I was, I was never the same. I just dressed like a boy. I used to talk like a boy. When he changed you, you never the same again. You never the same. I never used to wear dresses. I, I used to hate wearing dresses. But now I'm wearing dresses now. When God do a, do a change in you, you never the same again. And I thought I had to get myself together. I thought I had to change myself. But God was saying that He will change you where you are. 
If you're broken, he will change you. You don't have to change before you come to Christ. And I thought that's something that I, that I had to do. But I remember one Saturday, I just came to the altar, and I laid down everything on the altar. I had um, a bottle. I had a weed pack. I had a condom with me because that was something I was struggling with. And I laid down everything out on the altar because I wanted God to save me where I was. I want God to deliver and set me right. free. And that day I got filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah, I never did the same thing that day. And though it may be hard, though it may be tough to live for Christ, but God, God's love is sufficient. Yes. Though I may not didn't understand, though I may not, I was scared, God gave me the power to keep pushing, to keep pressing forward. And I just want to thank God, you know, for delivering and setting me free. And I just want to just tell my testimony that he, if he delivered me, he can also deliver you. Whether if you're not struggling with homosexuality, if you're struggling with pornography, if you're struggling with, or with cussing, if you're struggling with listening to unsecular music, if you're struggling with, you know, things that's ungodly, ungodly relationships, God can deliver and set you free. Whatever it is, there's nothing too hard for God. God has no favorites. There's nothing too hard for God to do. So my, my spoken word is saved today. It's about my testimony of how God was saying that I am worth the wait. I am worth waiting for. You know, um, sexual, sexual sins is um, against God's word. And in the midst of that, God was saying that I am worth the wait. No wedding bells. Just lustful attraction. Forget waiting. Worldly satisfactions. No rings. But you love each other. That was justification of killing the God inside each other. Every time you were lying inside each other. You're discontent and grown tired of the wait. So you make relationship proclamations of the new boo on Facebook. But your faith is booked on quick and easy standards. No standards doesn't glorify God who shall us to have first base. You lay flat on your back and your souls embrace. You place the crown of thorns on Christ's head as the blood runs down. The blood flows down and still spit in his face. In the midst of your sin, he be stretched out on the cross. His hands and feet will be nailed to the cross. In your place, committed sin in his face, he becomes a disgrace. One of the Father for you on the cross. In your place, and you crucify him. But he still offers grace. But shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? Surely not. After receiving affirmation of the truth that the wages of sin equal death, we still try to calculate how we can gain the whole world but not lose our soul. Church, we live in the right now generation, but we might go away with a quick fix to fill a void, commit fornication when nobody's saving the day nor saying I'm worth the wait. Lying there. Never before the king. You both take off your armor of God. Having no reverence for him. Then hide behind fig leaves like Adam and Eve. You see, we eat the fruit from the same forbidden tree. But you can't hide. Because God see your souls tied together. Committing sins against your own bodies together. And knowing Holy Spirit conviction heart hearted together. But then you pay the price in hell running together forever. Forever you be. To death do part. You have spiritual death do part. And so Jesus prayed to change our chain apart and give you a new heart and renew the right spirit within. Do not want to settle on those in sexual sin and then you will finally comprehend that God intends for you to not only want to wait, but to turn from your sin and to glorify Him. So today, make a pledge. To stop worrying about your mouth to clock. Tick tock on your way through life and your time should be focused on Christ because he paid the ultimate price. The living proof of true love. Persevered through strife. They up his life. He's the perfect sacrifice. Be Christ. That loves unselfishly and unconditionally. So I will give him my whole heart. Not in part or partially. Allowing him to touch and heal every single broken part of me. For now. I submit and report to a commander in chief, the Holy Spirit who is embedded on the inside of me. Me, who no longer date 
or settle for men that compromise the truth. Picking and choosing scriptures to justify their sin forever. Proof. Proof. From the ungodly conversations and purposeless dates, that God is urging you and me to simply wait. So I won't become Satan's prey. A warring lion seeking who we may devour. I won't go another second allowing Satan to overpower me with temporary fix, believing his lies and bags of tricks. But I'll wait patiently for my Adam to wake up from his sleep. God will crack open his chest, take his rib and place it on the inside of me. And he will be bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I'll identify him as different than all the rest. He will have the likeness of God, the reflection of the king, the ability to abandon his own will to follow Christ while leading his submissive queen. And when he sees me, I will be the one that's worth from all their duties. Displaying Proverbs 31 characteristics and duties. And you will be my witness. Then the midst of me waiting, I will always be about my father's business. To be presented as a radiant church without stain, wrinkle, or blemish. For who shall find a virtuous and capable wife? For I shall always be lost in Christ waiting. But at ease. And so content, he knows my heart's desires. But his will above mine is forever prevalent to Lord. My heart will forever be yours. Even if you decide not to open my marital doors, I will wait. Wow. I, I just I put Jessica on the spot. Y'all know I'm good about that. I want, I want all my teenagers to come up here to the front. All my teenagers and youth, I want you to come up. Nita and anybody that works with I want you guys to come up here to the front. Doesn't matter if you're visiting, just come up. I bet Jessica, she would pray over you guys and bless you guys or whatever she wants to pray. So I'm going to let her do this. God, we thank you, Jesus, God. God, we love you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, God. God, we thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy, God. We thank you, God, for bringing us this far, God. We ask you, God, to break our hearts, God, for the things, God, that break your hearts, God. We ask you, God, to shout, God, your, your love, God, and your power, God, on each and every team, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. Speaking, God, to their lives, God, right now, that they are worth the wait, Jesus, God. That they have a calling, God, on their lives, God. God, I ask you, God, to soften their hearts, God. God, break their hearts, God, for the things, God, that break your hearts, God. God, we love you, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. God, we plead the blood of Jesus, God, over their lives, God, right now, God. God, we bind the devil, God, and attack, God, over their lives, God, right now, God. God, you, for, your, for your love is, God, sufficient, God, for them, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. God, your love prevails, God, over them, God, right now, God, in Jesus' name, God. God, for their lives, God, belong to you, God. God, we bind every enemy's attack, God. We ask you, God, to, to come in, God, and prove their hearts, God. Take everything that's not like you, God, inside of them, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. Stretch out your loving arms, God, around them, God, right now, God. God, we, we ask you, God, to send your Holy Spirit, God, right now, God, with the evidence, God, is speaking in tongues, God, we ask you, God, to fill them, God, with the Holy Spirit, God, at a young age, God. We bind the devil, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. God, we thank you, God, we praise you, God, we honor you, God. Let them know that they are worth the way, Jesus, God, for our their work, God, is in you, God, and you alone, God. God, we thank you, God. We praise you, God, and we honor you, God. But we believe, God, in your healing power, God. We can believe, God, in your deliverance, God. We believe that your blood, God, prevails, God, in the love, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. But we stretch our arms, God, towards you, God. Can we never want to be the same, God, right now, in Jesus' name, God. Let them never be the same, God. Let them not be ashamed of your word, God. Let them not be ashamed of your power, God. Let them not be ashamed of your love, God. Let them not be ashamed of your healing power, God, in Jesus' name, God. As they go to school, God, let them not be ashamed, God. Let, let them shed the blood, let them, your love, God, in Jesus' name, to their friends, God. In Jesus' name, God. We ask you, God, to come into the lives, God, and save them, God. Those who are not saved, God. We ask you, God, to come into the lives, God, and set them free, God. God, we thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. 
We honor you, Jesus, God. God, you say in faith in the service, God, of things hope for, God. In the evidence of things not seen, God. Though we may not can't see you, God. We know that we have faith in you, God. It shall come to pass, God. We know that, God, we not, we don't, we not, we not, we not understand, God. We lean on you, God. We know that, God, we, we will prosper, God, in Jesus' name, God. God, I thank you, Jesus. God, we love you, Jesus. God, with all our hearts, God, with all our minds, God, with all our souls, God. God, we just love you. God, just nothing got too hard for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worth the wait. A couple weeks ago, I preached a message on those lines. And when she spoke that last night, I knew our church needed to hear that. I think our teenagers need to hear it from somebody beside the fat old man. Serious. They need to hear it from one of their peers. Somebody that played college basketball, got some college scholarships, did all that, was in the limelight. And God has totally changed your life. Man, that's powerful. Powerful. I don't know if we realize how powerful. Father, I love you. And I thank you for this powerful testimony. I thank you for what you've done in Jessica's life. And not only that, Lord, but how she is sharing what you've done in her life. A lot of people would never share what she just shared. But you said we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and word of our testimony. We love not our life even in the death. And Lord, she's done that. And I give you praise for a vessel, Lord. I pray that you would exalt her. I pray over her right now, Lord, that you would exalt her, that you would open up doors of opportunity to be able to minister the gospel through love just like she just did, Lord, that you would open up doors of opportunity for her to go in and, and, and pray with uh, young people, Lord, minister to young people, her peers, Lord, so that they will see that uh, what they're struggling with, she's already been through, done that, and now you've set her free. Maybe she can stop them, Lord, from going down this road some in this room right now, God, she can stop through her testimony from going down that road, the road that the devil wants to take. The thief come up with the steal, kill, and destroy Jesus. But you said that you came and would have life and more abundantly, Lord. So I pray abundant life over everyone in this room, Lord. I pray for Jessica. God, I pray a special prayer for her, Lord. You would use her and anoint her, Lord, to do great things, Lord. I'm, I'm believing for great things, greater things, Lord. Greater things in her ministry, Lord. You'd open up those doors. I give you praise for blessing her in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now I'm going to preach a few minutes. Y'all ready? Yes. Go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. We've been talking about Elijah and how God supernaturally provided for him for three and a half years. And I'm not going to go through all that again, but we saw uh, last week where Elijah ran from Jezebel. Got scared of a woman, took off running. 180 miles he ran. 180 miles he ran. And, and so uh, God spoke to him, God ministered to him, God helped him. But then when he got scared, he took off running. Listen, don't ever run away from God. Don't ever run away from what God's got you doing. I got a word, so I'm going to go ahead and go to, go to verse 8. Now we see that the angel had come and fed Elijah. And now he's, he's fed him for the second time. And, and he told him to get up because he's going to have a long journey. In verse 8 it says this. So he, Elijah got up. He ate and he drank. The food gave him new strength. Listen, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights. He kept going until he arrived to her. 180 miles. It was a mountain of God. Now verse 9. There he went into a cave and he spent the night. A message came to Elijah from the Lord and he said, Elijah, what are you doing here? Where are my Elijahs? That's the title of my message. Where are my Elijahs? He said, Elijah, what are you doing here? What in the world? Elijah's had the supernatural provision of God for three and a half years. And now an angel comes and cooks for him twice. Cooks bread, gives him a jar of water two times. And tells him what to do. And, and now he's sitting here at the mountain of God, the, uh, Mount Horeb. And he's sitting there and he says, God comes to him and says, Elijah, what are you doing here? Now, I want to ask you a couple questions. Where do you ever see that God told Elijah to, to leave? Did God ever one time tell Elijah to leave and run for his life? 
No. God supernaturally hid him and provided for him three and a half years. He would have done it there. Elijah ran on his own. Does it ever say that Elijah prayed and asked God's will on what he should do when he got the threats from Jezebel? Does it ever say that? No, it doesn't. He never asked. He just took off running scared. And I want you to hear my heart this morning. I believe the Lord spoke this to me. There's people in the church that when times get tough, they run. They book. They pack up tent. They get the, what I used to say is I'm going to grab my ball and go home. When times get, I'm not just talking about this church. I'm talking about churches all around the world. When times get tough, times are tough. This woman, Jezebel, had already killed a bunch of prophets of God. I mean, she was a mean woman. And she sent a threat. She said, I'm going to kill you. And if I don't, let the, let the gods be greatly displeased with me and be angry with me and mean to me. And so Elijah was scared. But there's so many people in the church, when it gets tough, they just run. They don't stand and fight. And I want to tell you something else, too. Elijah was a man just like us, the Bible says. He had passions just like us. He had emotions and feelings just like us. And what did he do? He followed his emotions. There's a lot of you in the church today that you follow your feelings and emotions. You don't follow the word of God. I'm not telling you that you should never leave a church. Y'all know I'm not saying that. I want the people to be in this church that God calls in this church. I could care less if we got 50 or if we got 5,000. If it's not the ones that God called here, we're going to have a mess. Amen? But don't just leave because it gets tough. That's right. God will let you know when it's time to leave. Don't leave on your emotions. You leave on His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's another thing in here I want you to keep looking. This is what Elijah said. He replied, Lord God who rules over all, I've been very committed to you. True. Elijah had been very committed to the Lord. He said, the people of Israel have turned their backs on your covenant. True. What were they doing? They were worshiping Baal, serving Baal and false idols. So these things are true. He said, they have torn down your altars. That's true. And they built up groves and they built up false altars. He said, they put your prophets to death with the sword. That's true. They were killing them. But listen to what he says here. He said, they put your prophets to, to death with the sword. He said, I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. <coughs> Hallelujah. Y'all ever felt like that? See, in ministry sometimes, when I used to do prison ministry, well, I still do prison ministry, but when I started prison ministry, I would drive 45 minutes to preach to one or two people or 20 people. It didn't matter. Wherever they put me, that's who I preached to. But I tried to get people to go with me. And there was times when I'd say, man, they want nobody to go with me to share the gospel. And maybe you've been in a ministry before. Or you're trying to start a ministry. And the Lord tells you to do it. And nobody will come alongside of you. Sometimes God wants you to do it yourself. Right. Amen. Amen. See, we got to be careful that we don't get this mentality that we're the only ones doing anything. Sometimes it's churches, you know, uh, or let me just back up. Sometimes it's a chaplain. When I go to chaplain's meetings and I listen to all this garbage is coming down the pipe and it's coming into the prisons and I'm the only one in the whole room that stands up and sees me get the mentality of thinking, I'm the only one that's got a voice for God in this place. To be perfectly honest with you, I wonder if some of them even saved. But it's God, it's not me. Amen. And we've got to be careful because listen, he said, he replied, Lord, he, he said, Lord God who rules over all, I've been very committed to you. The people in Israel turned their backs on your covenant. They have torn down your idol altars. They've put your prophets to death with the sword and I am the only one left and they're trying to kill me. Look at America. What are they doing? They're taking down the Ten Commandments. They're bringing all this other stupid stuff down the pipe. You know, the transgenders and all this stuff that we're trying to, they're tearing down the altars of God. And it's easy for us to think, well, our world's going to hell in a handbasket. And I believe it, but we've got to be careful that we don't realize that God wants us to show this world that he's the one true God. What is it that God wanted Elijah to do? Y'all better get with me. I'll preach the four o'clock and lock the doors. Why did God send Elijah in the first place? Was to show Ahab who was the wicked king, and show all the people of Israel, because he turned them away from God, that he was the one true God. That's why he sent him. So now, why does he run 180 miles? How is he going to prove that God's the God of Israel when he's 180 miles off? Amen? 
How's God going to prove that he's God in your life and in your family's life when you're always boom, 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 doing this, doing this, and never getting settled with God and getting the work of God? Hallelujah. If the shoe fits, wear it. Amen. Listen, verse 11. He said, the Lord said, go out. I love, I love this. This is my favorite part. He said, the, the Lord said, go out, stand on the mountain in front of me. I am going to pass by. Listen to this. And the, as the Lord approached, a very powerful wind tore the mountains apart. This wind comes down to and tears the mountains apart. And then it says that as, as the Lord approached, a powerful wind came down and tore the mountains apart. It broke up the rocks, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, listen to this, the fire came, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. What? Who was the, what was in the fire earlier when they had the altar there? You had all the 450 and then the 400, other 400 prophets. You had 850 prophets standing up against Elijah and he spoke and he said, the, the, the God that answered by fire, let him answer by fire. That's whose God we're going to serve. They yelled, screamed all day long, nothing happened. And Elijah, the fire of God came down. So he was in the fire that day. Oh, I'm going to just preach this. Listen to me. We get into a rut to what we think of the, it, the only time the Holy Spirit moves is somebody gets slain in the Spirit or something happens right here and this or that. Sometimes God moves in that still, small voice. It ain't always in the earthquake. It ain't always in the shout. Matter of fact, some people that shout, their walk don't match their talk. All right. Amen. I don't care how high you jump and how loud you shout. It's how your feet hit the ground and you walk when you get out of here. That's what I care about. There's a lot of people shouting and running and jumping. The devil, hey, I, I, I got a prayer language. I speak in tongues, but the devil speaks in tongues too. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. God wants real people. He wants the real food on the faith. Amen. But you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Listen here. Then a voice said to him, let me go back up. After the earthquake and the fire came, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. See, earlier he was in the fire. And after the fire, there was a gentle whisper or a still small voice. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his coat over his head. There was a sign of reverence. Moses said the same thing when he walked up to the fiery bush. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his coat over his face. He went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then a voice said to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? Has God ever gotten your attention like that and said, what are you doing here? Amen. Maybe you left and you went and you was doing something. You, you went, so I, I'm going to just take my mask off. Hallelujah. I don't know why. I'm, I mean, I knew the Lord was going to do all this, but bless, bless my heart and yours too. Amen. Amen. When I got saved at the Wesleyan Church, I love the church. I love the pastor. He's been here before. But God started dealing with me about, about leaving. And, and I knew it was the Lord telling me to leave. But see, when I left, I was leaving my wife because she didn't want to go down there. I was leaving my mom and my brother and my family and everybody that I knew. And a bunch of the people in that church, I was the one that brought them to the church and led them to the Lord. Because I just, that was my personality. I was a soul winner. But the Lord kept dealing with me about leaving. I didn't want to leave. But when I left, man, it was the... It was the most, uh, it was the best decision I ever made at that time because God just moved in my life and did awesome things in my life. But see, I started thinking, the devil come in my mind, he started saying, what about all those people you left? You know, what about all those people that you left? Who's going to minister to them now? And I went back. I went back. See, some people leave and what never supposed to leave. Some people leave and was supposed to leave and then they try to come back and it's a mess too. And when I came back, it was terrible. The Spirit of God wasn't moving. My prayers were bouncing off the ceiling. Nothing wasn't right. And I, and I, I come before the Lord. I repented. And I got my tail back where I was supposed to be. Am I lying? And then God started moving. Elijah was not supposed to be where he was. Elijah was supposed to be 180 miles back where he come from. Facing that Jezebel, calling her tail out, but no, he got scared. And sometimes in church, we get scared and we run. And listen, let me tell you this, and I've seen this happen in ministries before. God will speak to somebody and tell them to do something. 
And instead of them doing it, they'll run. But then when the, wherever they run, they expect to get over there and they want God to use them. When God has called you to do something, a work somewhere, wherever it is, and you run and you turn your back on God, I don't care where you go, God will not use you. Man may use you, but God won't use you. Man. God don't play games. He don't call you to do this and then, well, I'm going to call you to do this. Well, then I'm going to call you to do it. No, you better do that one first. Come on. Why y'all looking at me like that? I got a bunch of runners in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, boy, what in the world did I walk into? The word that she fits where? For all of us. Amen. He goes on, he says, the voice came to him again, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah did the same thing. He replied, Lord God, who rules over all, I've been very committed to you. The people of Israel have turned their backs on, their co on your covenant, torn down the altars. They put your prophets to death with their swords. And now I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me too. Do you not know, do you not think that God knew that that was going on? God knew what was going on. God knows what's going on in your life. God knows what you're going through. You may not think he does. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. And he wants to help you. But you got to heed to his word. Listen to what he says, man. This is some powerful stuff. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came. <laughs> go back the way you came. Sometimes we got to go back. Sometimes we got to go back and we got to make things right. We got to man up. And say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, I messed up. I've messed up so many times it ain't funny. I've come to some of you and had to apologize to you because I've messed up. There's nothing wrong with messing up and, and saying you're sorry, repenting or whatever. But sometimes you just got to go back. Amen. Sometimes you just got to go back. It may, be, I, it may be go back to whatever. I'm not just talking about church. I'm talking about whatever in your life. Sometimes you just got to go back. You got to make it right. And then God will use you. Amen. He said go to the desert of Damascus. Listen to this. That's 300 miles away. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? He went 180 miles out of the way on foot. He didn't have a car. And now he's got to go 300 miles. So that's 480 miles round trip that he screwed up. Don't nobody raise your hand, but how many miles round trip did you mess up walking with God because you went the wrong way, in the wrong place, at the wrong time? I just raise my hand and say, ouch, and oh me, because I've done it. Amen? Elijah was out of God's will. He wanted to use Elijah to show the people. So he says, Elijah, go back. Go back, and this is what I want you to do. He said, when you get there, anoint. Now, I may not pronounce these words right, but it's all good. Amen? Anoint Haziel as king of Aram. Also anoint Jehu as king of Israel. He is the son of Nimshi. And anoint Elisha from Abel, Mahola, Mahola, whatever you want to call it, as the next prophet after you. I'm going to ask the Lord, why in the world do you give him such crazy names? <laughs> My goodness. Can't even read them. Got to have a, a degree in, uh, what, a couple, couple doctors in English to read this stuff. I like this next next one. He is the son of, I was going to say snap hat. <laughs> Shaphat. But snap hat looks good, don't it? <laughs> then verse 17, Jehu will put to death anyone that escapes Haziel's sword. And Elijah, Elisha will put to death anyone who escapes Jehu's sword. Now I want you to get this right here, verse 18. Now notice he's going to, to anoint somebody to take his place. I believe every good leader needs to have somebody that follows him. He needs to have somebody in his footsteps that, that he's showing what's going on so that when he's gone, nothing falls apart. Amen? Verse 18. But I will keep 7,000 people in Israel for myself. God said, I want you to be doing all this, but I'm going to keep 7,000 people in Israel for myself. They have not bowed down to Baal, and they have not kissed him. It was a, it was a ritual that you kissed in worship. You kissed that false uh, idol. Now, I want you to get this. Elijah thought he was by himself. He thought he was the only one serving God. He thought he was the only one standing up for God. And God said, I got 7,000 others who hadn't bowed down to Baal. Sometimes in the church, 
In the church world, we look at all these different things that's going on. These preachers that are falling. These preachers that are preaching false doctrines. These preachers that never preach on sin. And, I, and, and in my mind, I get the word. When in the world is somebody going to stand up and preach the word of God? Amen. Let me tell you something. These preachers doing it. That's right. They may not be in the 25,000 seat coliseums. They not, may not be in the, the 15,000 seat coliseums. But these preachers around here that's preaching the gospel, they might have 10 people in the church. But God's going to have a remnant. He's got a remnant. And He's going to have a remnant. It don't matter what we do, what we say. God's got a remnant somewhere that's going to stand up for Him. And you better be in it. Y'all should be shouting right now. Well, one of you got it. You want to be in that remnant? When Jesus comes back, are you going to be in that remnant? Are you going to be yeah. found faithful? Do you want to be found faithful? Don't you want to be doing something for God when he comes back? What in the world are you going to do when he comes back and you ain't doing nothing? He wants to use your church. There's a lost and dying world out here. He wants you to be an Elijah. He wants you to stand up now for truth. Everywhere we are. Elijah left Mount Horeb. He saw Elisha, the son of... Snap hat. No, I'm just kidding. It's a fat. Elisha was plowing. Listen to what he was doing. Let me. Uh, this is another good point. It says, Elisha was plowing in a field. He was driving the last of 12 pair of oxen. Elijah went up to him and he threw his coat, or his anointing, the coat that he had around him. He said he threw it over on Elisha. Now I want you to get this. Elisha is plowing a field. You never know what or where you're going to be doing when God calls you. You better be ready. When he calls, you better be ready to go. Amen? Oh, some of y'all are like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. What if God called you to Tennessee? What if God called you to Africa? What if God come and spoke to you in the middle of the night and said, I want you to go to Tennessee. You're going to go eight and a half hours away from anybody that you uh, have contact with, your family and everything, and you don't even have a job. Everybody poke your neighbor and say you don't even have a job. What would you do? Jerry said a little while ago about how we say we believe, but do we really believe? If God come to you like he did Elisha, he said, hey, drop everything you've got and come and follow me. Are you willing to do it? You say, oh, the Lord never called me. I bet Elisha wasn't out there plowing, thinking I'm getting ready to be the man of God, the prophet of God, to the children of Israel, these stiff-necked, hard-netted, rebellion people that's got tore down the altars and worship false gods. Surely God ain't going to call me to do that. Come on. Hallelujah. Surely God ain't going to call me to new visit ministries in Lincoln where they bust and discuss and can't be trusted. As before. Y'all straightened out now. I don't even know why I get them preach every Sunday because y'all got it all together now. Y'all like me, we're perfect. No worries. Never mess up. Never have a problem listening to God. Never get mad and angry. Never lose your temper. Never want to slap the spit out of somebody's mouth when you get mad at them. Huh? I'm sure none of y'all do that anymore, do you? Never get mad at work when your boss is a jerk. Or you sit around Sister Bucket Mouth. <laughs> or somebody pulls in front of you going down the road. Oh, Never get road rage anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, we are a work in progress, church. We have not arrived. I know I have. You might have, but I haven't arrived yet. A work in progress. Elisha was out there plowing. And Elijah comes and throws his coat over him, anoints him. And he knew that that was going to be what he was going to be doing. It says this. It says, Elijah left Mount Herb. He saw Elisha, the son of yeah, Shaphat. Elisha was plowing in the field. He was driving the last of the 12 pair of oxen. Listen to this. Elijah went up to him and he threw his coat around him. Then Elisha left his oxen. He ran after Elijah. He ran after the man of God. He said, let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye. He said, then I'll come with you. Man, Elijah was like, you know, and this is where, this is where I know that this is a fault of mine. I feel like the way that I did things, other people should. When God told me to do something, I just done it. I didn't have to go to everybody and their brother and ask them about it and all that. I just done it. I just felt like that's what you got to do. 
But I, I need to have compassion on people because everybody don't have the same measure of faith. And sometimes God may ask you to do something and I'm sitting here looking, it's only teach a Sunday school class for three weeks. My goodness. And y'all act like y'all got to fast for 12 years and do all that before you can commit to doing something. And it blows my mind. Okay? Why are y'all looking at me like that? I mean, when me and Glenn was in church before we was pastors, if something had to be done, we done it. You know, we just did it. And then when you become a pastor and you got little bitty things that you need done, especially with the kids, man, my Lord, and then you can't get people to do it. It's like, you want to get mad? I had a spirit of fight all over me this morning. I had to just pray. Because three weeks in a row I've had to ask for help. I shouldn't have to ask for one time. Some of you, if your kids don't clean their room the first time, you beat the dog out of them. Maybe the next time when I ask something and y'all don't do it, I just need to beat the dog out of you and we'll see if that works. Yeah, y'all be lining up for that, won't you? I seen the kids say, yeah, I want to see that. I want to see that. I see it. Listen, Elijah said, go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? I tried to study that out. Nobody really wanted to tackle that. You know, Jesus told him, said, don't go back. Let the dead bury the dead. You know, you, we ain't got time to be doing that. But I think Elijah was a little bit different. I think he knew he caught him off guard. This was a huge thing. He said, go back and tell your mom and dad. Bye. That's cool. Go back and tell them bye. That's the way I think. Now I may be wrong. I've been wrong one time in my life. Y'all believe that, don't you? So Elisha left him, went back. Listen, he got his two oxen and killed them. He burned the plow to cook the meat. He gave it to the people and then he ate it. Then he started to follow Elijah. He became Elijah, Elijah's assistant. What a powerful story right there. Elijah had run. He left Gehazi. You remember? He left his other servant. And now God gives him the man that's going to take his place. God's always got somebody. If you don't do it, God's going to raise somebody else up to do it. I don't know. How many of y'all have ever heard of Reinhard Bunky? A couple of you. Reinhard Bunky was an evangelist. And God came to him and he said, I want you to be the evangelist to Africa. And Reinhardt started to give God a couple excuses. He says, look, I've already been to two other people. And they said, no, are you going to say no to? I've already been to two other people. And Reinhardt Bunky today has a worldwide ministry because he said yes. You might say yes to teaching threes and fours. And who knows what God's liable to do later. I said yes going into the jails preaching to two or three people. And look who I'm preaching to now. Lord, help me. You know what I'm saying? There's no telling what God will do in one day what God can do. He can change everything in one day. You say yes and then see what He does. Let's stand. Father, I love you this morning. I give you praise for what you've done. The worship was awesome. The word Jessica spoke was just powerful testimony. And this word is powerful. Lord, we need to learn some things. Lord, we need to learn to, to stay and fight. We're going to see the end of it later, but Lord Elijah should have stayed and he should have followed what you was having him to do. He didn't even inquire what you would have him to do. Please help us not to do that. Please help us to seek your face. I've always said this with a job, with a marriage, with work, whatever it is. I mean, a church. Do not leave unless God says leave. Don't leave and then try to get God's permission. Don't leave a job for another job unless you've got God's permission. Sometimes it's tough making that decision. I understand that. Sometimes it's tough leaving a church, going to another church. You miss everybody. I understand it, but, but hear, hear my heart. God has a perfect plan for all of us. And when we mess up, and I have, I've told you I've messed up. When we mess up, then don't, don't just water in it. Repent and go back. God told him to go back. And then God, see, sometimes it's tough for us to admit that we were wrong or that we missed God or whatever, whatever it is. But Elijah didn't complain. When God told him to go back, 
Elijah didn't say a word. He then heard that still small voice. And there's some of you in here, you've made some mistakes. You've messed up and you've been waiting on God to, to clap, to yell, to scream, to whatever. And, and God said, no, I'm, I'm in this still small voice here. Don't beat yourself up because you messed up. All of us, every single person in here is messed up. Don't beat yourself up because you've messed up. Make it right. Whatever it is that God's telling you to do, make it right. Elijah had to go back. And we see God move in a mighty way. Obey God no matter what he says. Elijah missed God after these great miracles. After three and a half years of being fed by ravens, being fed by a widow woman that had nothing, raising a dead boy, all these great things that God did in his life, and he still missed it. Don't you think we're going to miss it? We're going to miss it. But just don't stay in that mess. Don't be too prideful to admit that you was wrong. Father, I pray over this congregation, myself, Lord, we would humble ourselves, submit ourselves to you. You said that we resist, we resist the devil, he flee from us. God, there's some in here that we've, we've made some bad decisions. And I believe today you're telling us we need to make them right. God, I've asked you before and I ask you again to forgive me for any bad decisions that I've made. And I've made them. But I thank you that you've been gracious. Like Jessica said, your grace is sufficient. Thank you, God, that you don't give up on us. Thank you that you continue to love us and deal with us. You said that when you begin a good work in us, you'll complete it. So minister to your people today, Lord. Those that have questions, those that don't know which direction to go. They might be in a fight like Elijah's in a fight. Maybe it's not for their, their life, but it's their spiritual life. Bad relationships. Their marriage is jacked up. Their kids are jacked up. And they just need to hear from you, Lord. I pray that you speak to them in that still, small voice. Because church, I want you to hear me. You don't hear anything else I've said today. Hear this. That God absolutely loves you, every one of you. He sent his son Jesus to die on a cross just for you. And when you mess up, he still loves you. He's not going to want you to wallow in that sin and stay in that sin. He wants you to come out of that sin. He's not, he's not going, to, going to fellowship with you in that sin. He's not going to partake in that sin. Those mistakes that maybe you've made. But just come back and say, Father, I'm sorry. I missed you. I messed up. Please forgive me. And he will. Instantly. Instantly. He's not like us. People tell us we're sorry. Sometimes we'll make them, we'll make them water in a little bit. We want them to really feel bad. God's not like that. He wants his children happy. Great persecution is coming to the church. It's coming. Great persecution is coming to the Christian that will stand up and speak what God's word boldly. Not just pastors. You too, sheep. So we must make sure that everything's confessed, everything's right. We're walking in His perfect will. We're not 180 miles away when we're supposed to be in another place. We're right where He wants us to be. Like Pastor Dick White used to say, you're under the spout where the glory comes out. You're not going to find a perfect pastor. You're not going to find a perfect church. You're not going to find a perfect Sunday school class. It's, not, it's nowhere. But you can find a perfect place that God wants you to be. Don't get restless. Don't get restless. The Bible says your gifts will make room for you. Don't get restless. Let God move. Father, I pray that you move by your spirit. Move by your spirit in this place. Touch your people, Lord. Draw your people to, to you. You said if we lift Jesus up, you draw him in unto you. We lift you up this morning. Father, touch your people. If you're in here this morning, every head bowed and eyes closed, please. If you're in here this morning, and you say, I, 
I need to get back right with the Lord. I've, I've run away. I've, I've, I've you know, gotten out of His will. But I want to get back in His perfect will this morning. And I'm raising my hand and surrender to Him and making a pledge to Him this morning that I want to serve Him and I want to trust Him. Would you raise your hand with me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I pray over these guys that raise their hand. I pray that you minister to them. I pray that they would keep this commitment that they're making right now. That you'd use them mightily, Lord. God, you forgive them, cleanse them. Like I said before, we've all messed up, fallen short of your glory. But I pray if there's anyone in here today, Lord, that's lost, that does not know you, that they would accept you before it's too late. We never know. We never know when it's our time. So please, Father, minister to them. This word that Jessica spoke over our youth, I pray that they would listen to that. I pray that if they've messed up, if they've fallen into sexual sin or homosexuality or anything like that, Lord, that they would realize, just like Jessica did, it's wrong, and they repent, they turn it over to you, they give it to you, and then you would change them just like you did her. They'll never be the same again. I pray that you do that today in their life, Lord. I ask you to move by your spirit, Lord. We give you praise for everything you've done. Lord, help us to be a witness this week and to do your will in everything that we say and do. And we love you and we give you praise for everything. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. Hug your neighbor. We love you. Please don't forget about Anita and the youth out there. Go with God. Amen. Go with God. Let God use you this week. <laughs>